quickly on the subject, the walk of faith. The walk of faith. Last Tuesday, Wednesday, if you remember, we spoke on the walk of faith. Now is the walk of faith. Faith is both a walk and a walk. First Thessalonians chapter 1 and in verse 3. First Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3. It says, remembering without season your walk of faith. Labor of love and patience in hope. Patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and of our Father. Remembering without ceasing your walk of faith. This evening, our major objective is to understand the walk of faith. I want to start by way of introduction by saying that faith Bible faith is work. Faith is not just talk. Faith is work. When you see a person just <laughs> sitting and hanging at home and he said, are you not going to work today? He said, no, I'm sitting down. I'm just waiting. By faith, my work will meet me at home. That person doesn't understand anything about faith. Faith is work. Bible faith. Take note of the following. Um, call it key thoughts concerning faith and work. Some of them will be quotations that I will make of what some people said in time past. Number one, faith is not cheap talk. Faith is hard work. Popular quote by God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo. Faith is not cheap talk. Faith is hard work. Number two, there is no victory for the lazy. I first heard that from the mouth of Gloria Copeland, the wife of Kenneth Copeland. There is no victory for the lazy. In the journey of faith, in the world of faith, in the life of Christianity, there is no victory for the lazy. The third is probably from Smith Wigglesworth, and then probably. Reenacted by Rahad Bonke. I'm not too sure, but I think it's Smith Wigglesworth. He said the Acts of the Apostles was written because the Apostles acted. <laughs> it was written because the Apostles acted. The Acts of the Apostles was written because the Apostles acted. That was Smith Wigglesworth. And where people are not ready to act, nothing can be written against them. I am extrapolating that from that statement. Number four, and this is my statement. It takes the work of faith to see faith at work. It takes the work of faith to see faith at work. Because I know that what you don't work out can never, what you don't work at can never work out. What you don't work at can never work out. It takes the work of faith to see faith at work. Finally, it is always the move of man 
that provokes the move of God. I'm saying that again. It is always the move of man that provokes the move of God. That's according to Mark chapter 16 and in verse 20. And they went everywhere. Went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them. Confirming the word with signs following. They went and the Lord went. Until they went, the Lord could not went. What have I said? Faith is not cheap talk. Faith is hard work. God's servant bishop put it upon. There is no victory for the lazy. The only thing that the lazy person is entitled to is defeat. That was Gloria Copeland. The Acts of the Apostles was written because the apostles acted. Word. It takes the work of faith to see faith at work. And then I said again, it is always the move of man that provokes the move of God. Always the move of man. What is the work of faith about? Number one, what is the work of faith? Or what does the what what works are we talking about? Number one, the works of faith are the actions required by faith to produce the manifestations of faith. Actions required by faith to produce the manifestations of faith. Things to do. Second, it is the effort required by faith to see the effect of faith. Effort required. They are the effort required by faith to see the effect of faith. Somebody may claim to walk in faith or live in faith without effect. Somebody may claim to um, believe in faith without manifestation. The effort required by faith to see the effect of faith. Number three, there are the responsibilities placed on us by faith. In order to see the possibilities of God. The responsibilities placed on us by faith. In order to see the possibilities of God. What do the work of faith or the works of faith, what are we referring to? Number one, number four, they are the demands. Placed on us, or placed on, on us, in order to see the dividends of faith. The demands, demands placed on us to cause us to see the dividends of faith. And number five, it is the impute, they are the impute, the impute required by faith to produce the impute of the same. Impute required by faith to produce the impact of the same. What are the works of faith? Number one, they are the actions required by faith to produce the manifestations of faith. Second, they are the effort required by faith to see the effect of faith. And then there are the responsibilities placed on us by faith in order to see the possibilities of God. 
and then there are the demands placed on us in order to see the dividends of faith and finally the impute required by faith to produce the impact of the same what this is saying to you is anywhere you require manifestations there are actions to put forth where effect is needed effort is required say it like this there is no manifestation without action there is no effect without effort you can't see possibility without responsibility. Anywhere somebody is seeing possibility, is trying to see possibilities without accepting responsibility, you are face to face with an irresponsible person. There is no possibility without responsibility. Anywhere you want to see dividends, there are demands. And where you want to see impact, there is impute. That is what is required to as the work of faith. You can see people sit in church for donkey years and just be claiming some things verbally with their mouth and see no result at all in life. And they are saying that the Bible doesn't work. Some people say, oh, they say you should name it and claim it. And I've been naming it and claiming it and nothing is happening. Oh, no, it's, it's, not, it's not just like that. There is more to it. Hallelujah. What is the outcome? Of the work of faith. The outcome of the work of faith. When faith is worked. What happens? One. The working of faith. Releases the power. To. Arrive at desired results. The working of faith. Releases the power. To arrive at desired results. I have always said. That faith is the switch of power. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 11. Paul the apostle speaking. In 2 Thessalonians say. Wherefore also. We pray always for you. That our God will count you worthy. Of this calling. And fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness. And the work of faith with power. The work of faith with power. The work of faith with power. Everywhere faith is walked, power is released. The work of faith with power. Mark chapter 5 verse 28 all the way to verse 30. You remember the story of the, of the, 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 the woman with the issue of blood. She said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him. Turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, thou seest the multitude thronging thee. And seest thou who touched me? The woman said, if I will touch. And she touched. And the power sweet issue of blood was electrocuted because faith is the switch of power. Faint faith is worked. Supernatural power is switched on. The working of faith releases power to arrive at desired results. Secondly, the working of faith attracts the partnership of God. The working of faith attracts the partnership of God. You know, we just said that God moves with those who move. God walks with those who walk. In Mark chapter 16 verse 20, they, they went everywhere and the Lord went with them, walking with them. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. He went with them. When it was time to part the Red Sea, Moses had a rod in his hand. In Exodus chapter 14 verse 21. Scripture said. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind. All that night. And made the sea dry land. And the waters were divided. Moses had to stretch his hand. Before God would cause the east wind. 
to part the Red Sea. God will not stretch the hand for Moses. And Moses has no power of his own to bring the east wind. God won't carry the Moses rod. And Moses won't call the east wind. In the journey of faith, it is when man's, man's obligation is fulfilled that God's manifestation is confirmed. When your obligation is fulfilled, his manifestation is confirmed. It's like the game of chess and the game of all this draft or whatever. When you move, the other person moves without you asking him to move. When you have moved, you don't need to beg God to move. His move is automatic. This is Faith, the working of faith attracts the partnership of God. So men of faith, women of faith, they walk with God. Thirdly, the working of faith permit me to put it this way. The working of faith connects the life of God. I heard God's servant Bishop Hedeko said some time ago. Faith is a living force drawn from the living world to produce living proofs. A living force drawn from the living word to produce living proofs. What makes faith living is work. James chapter 2 verse 17. Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead. Being alone. Verse 20. Even so faith, but will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. Dead. Works. Action. Effort. Responsibility. Is what vitalizes faith. It vivifies faith. It animates faith. Active faith is lively faith. Inactive faith is impotent faith. Don't forget what I just said. He said, faith is the living force drawn from the living word to produce living proofs. Again, faith is the living force drawn from the living word to produce living proofs. What makes that faith living is called works. Working it. He said, faith without works is dead. So I said, active faith is lively faith. Inactive faith is impotent faith. Active faith is dynamic faith. Active faith is productive faith. The aim tonight is to move you to the realm where your faith in God is active, is lively, is productive. Somebody say a loud amen. Please note that victory is the outcome of faith. Victory in every realm in life because scripture said, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. First John chapter 5 verse 4. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. So victory is the product of faith. But until faith is put to work, victory in life is impossible. Until faith is put to work, defeat is inevitable. Inevitable. <laughs> so let's move to the next level what specific actions or effort are required by faith to produce results what specific effort what specific action 
What specific work is required to produce the effect of faith? To produce the action of faith? Are you ready? Number one is the work, is the, is the effort or work to arrive at relevant light and insight. The effort or work to arrive at relevant necessary light or insight. That light, that insight you need for life, for that particular time, for that particular situation. The effort to arrive at it is the number one work of faith. Because light is the food of faith, is the fuel of faith. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 said, So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. To arrive at light is labor. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 17 was talking about the elders that labor. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of, the, worthy of double honor. Especially they who labor in the word. Labor in the word. And in doctrine. What is that word labor all about? It is the labor to see out of the word. That word in season. That target specific word that gives that challenge a technical knockout. That word. That specific word. That makes you jump. That makes you feel like, oh, is this in the Bible? Then that devil is a bastard. Then I can't die before my time. Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 16. It is the labor of finding the word. Thy words we have found. That's the labor. And I did it them. That's another, another the extension of the labor. And thy words was unto me. The joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord of hosts. Thy words were found. Before the words can be found, there has to be a search. That is labor. You search, then you find. That is labor. You search, you find, you eat. You digest, you, you masticate, you chew. Then you digest, then you absorb. That is labor. The effort or the work to arrive at relevant light. That situation that will, that will cause me to, to, to kill this arrow coming from the village. That will kill this situation around. That is labor. Luke chapter 4 verse 17. The Bible said, And there was delivered unto him, talking about Jesus, the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written and that was what was written concerning him the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the lord and he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all of them that sat in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say, He began to say, This day, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. Hallelujah. 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 Does that word mean anything to anybody here today? He opened the book and found the place. That's the challenge. Many open the book, but they don't find anything. The labor of faith is the capacity to open the book and being able to find something. Or listening to that message, that CD, and being able to hear something. Or reading that book, and being able to see something you haven't seen before. If you need to pray, 
Psalm 119 verse 18. Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. Then you would need to pray. If you need to pray according to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17, 16 and 17, that you'll ask God, cease not to give thanks for me, for you making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. If you need to pray that prayer, you will need to pray it. Because it is only when you open the book that you can find what is written concerning you. And it is only when you have found what is written that you can become a written epistle to your generation. It is when you have found what is written concerning you when you have found what is written that the eyes of your generation can turn in your direction. All eyes were fastened on him. It is when you have found what is written that you can begin to see the fulfillment of scripture. He said today this scripture is fulfilled. That's labor. That's labor. When you are able to see it, not just that you heard somebody say it, it was like it's revelation to you. It said, it said something, it turned on something inside you as if you drank wine. It just exploded something inside you. That is why faith is not cheap talk. <laughs> that is the work of faith, number one. Number two is the work of or the effort or work the effort or labor to exist without fear doubt unbelief or anxiety the effort the labor to exist without fear Without doubt, without unbelief, anxiety, or any form of negative emotion. This is work number two. That the revelation will install a conviction. What you saw in the work number one will produce a result that will cause a conviction. That will take you above the realm of fear, doubt, unbelief, anxiety. Or any negative emotion. That is work number two. Because these negative emotions I mentioned. The fear, the doubt, the unbelief, the anxiety, the worry. They are the, they are the, they are the, they are the neutralizers of faith. They are mutually exclusive. They are diametrically opposed. Diagonally antagonistic. Where faith is, they can be, and where they are, faith can thrive. That's why he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, all the way to verse 5, he said, Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Having all audacity to challenge every confrontation when your obedience is fulfilled. So you cast down imaginations. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 to 2 I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of the living God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice wholly acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be transformed don't let the things of this world charge your mind be transformed by the renewing of your mind so you can prove what is good acceptable and perfect will of God that is work of faith that is work of faith. We live in a world where you, you will be hearing news continuously that will introduce fear 
doubt or you see things. The television of our generation, the television of these days, especially the cable satellite televisions, you watch them, news that can break your heart. I mean, we live in a world where on a daily basis, things are coming up to challenge your faith. To question why you, you should still believe what you are believing. In the light of the realities on ground. <laughs> but you use the word. You use the revelation. You use the light. To renew your mind. No. This is not what scripture said. He said it will be unto me according to my faith. Not according to the economy. Not according to the news on, on air. Not according to the happenings in the land. It is to me according to my faith. It's not my portion. It's work. Do you understand? To live free of fear is scripture work. To be free of doubt and unbelief, you walk it from scripture. To be free of worry and anxiety. That is work number two. Number three, the, the work or effort or labor, whichever one we are using now in the right up of continuous positive declaration. Continuous. is work. The work, the effort, the labor of continuous positive authoritative declaration is work. You know, in scripture, the Bible said, on the seventh day, God rested from his work, which he did. And you wanted to find out which particular work did he do in the garden. He was talking. He was declaring, let there be light. Let there be this. Let there be that. Let's make man. I think the only slight work you may say was when he sat down to mold Adam. The balance of the work was declaration. That is work enough. Because the easiest thing to confess is the negative things. It's the easiest thing. The easiest thing. Am I communicating? There is the continuous pressure in our world to speak what is happening. There is a continuous pressure to speak in accordance with what everybody is saying. There is a continuous pressure to speak what is happening instead of what is written. There is a continuous pressure to speak in order to, to, be, to, to look social. To speak in conformity to what people are speaking. Number chapter 13 verse 33. The people came back with evil report. And they said, we saw the giants, the sons of Enoch, which were come of the giants and were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. And the people lifted their voices and began to cry. And when you go down... Caleb and Joshua said, no. No. Ten spies came with unbelief and doubt. Caleb stilled the people. No. Joshua, no. We are able to go. These people shall be bread for us. That should be Numbers chapter 14 and in verse 7, 8, 9. And they speak unto all the children of the company of Israel, saying, the land which we pass through to search it. Back up a bit. When these people brought their own report, Caleb and, back up a bit, Caleb and Joshua, and Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes, as they saw people crying. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, the land which we passed through to search it, the other people say that they saw giants there, that we are as grasshoppers, they are as grasshoppers in their eyes. And so, they, they were in their own eyes. Our own opinion is different. Our own opinion is different. The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. Hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land. And he give it to us. A land which flowed with milk and honey. Look at what he's about to say. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land. For they are bread for us. And their defense is departed from them. And the Lord is with us. Fear them not. Ay, 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 ay. That is work. That is work. 
When everybody, when 90% of the people are saying the opposite, and you came and you are saying the, the exact opposite. No, I refuse to agree. I refuse. The devil is not in control. The devil cannot be in control. The devil cannot be in control. I told you the other day, I was asked on television, NTA, somebody sent a question and said, does it mean that the coronavirus is stronger than the word of God? I said, God forbid. I said it is not stronger than the word of God. It can never be stronger than the word of God. I gave the testimony of a, a man in New York City, medical doctor. They sent us prayer from there. Her medical, his medical doctor colleague. The man was on ventilator. And my schoolmate, who is a medical doctor in Houston, Texas, we had talked a few days before then. He had told me that 80% of those who went on ventilators there None of them will come out. 80%. This doctor got co coronavirus while treating patients. And he was now on ventilator. Literally gone. Faith in God. Prayer jacked him back under 48 hours. He was back on his feet. Still back on his feet and back to his work. And I shared that testimony that day on, on, tele, on NTA. It's not stronger than the word of God. Today I got news. I think this was from Maryland or something. One of our members in Paracord sent me a message of a man and his wife, both of them, on admission, I think with their children. But the man's situation was terrible. Doctors say we don't know if he is going to die because he was not responding, unconscious with ventilators. We prayed, the wife was released immediately. While I prayed, they said I declared that under 48 hours, he would be out. I, 72 hours. I, I, I couldn't remember that particular declaration, but that was what they said. And I said, 72 hours, he will be out. Today is the exact 72 hours. And the doctor said, you are free to go. Today. Out of unconsciousness, out of ventilator, out of everything. So it's possible that Things can be happening negative and terribly and disastrously. Yet, we have the work of faith, the labor of continuous positive authoritative declaration. Joel chapter 3 verse 10 says, The weak beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. We, having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore we speak. That is the, that is the work of faith. Speaking boldly, authoritatively what you believe. What you believe is not too useful until it is declared. God believed in creating the world, but that couldn't happen until he declared them. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20, he said to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, this Bible, it is because there is no light in them. You know, I told you that light is the fuel of faith. And if there is light in you, you will speak according to the word. That is the work of faith. Number three, I can't die before my time. There will be no witch on the face of the earth that can claim victory over my life and destiny forever. Ancestral generational forces can't limit me and limit my life or destiny. No demon, no disease, no affliction, no wicked man can take me out of this life one second before my God allotted time of assignment on the earth. Not one. These are, these are things you see and then you declare and decree. And like we said, the work of faith provokes the partnership of God. God steps in to say, oh, you believe that? And you are, you are bold about that? And you, and, you are, and you are authoritative about that 
I stand with you to make it come. Because I said it. And I am here to back it. That is the effort, the work, the labor of continuous positive authoritative declaration. Number four is the work or effort or labor of practical action. The work or the effort or the labor of practical action. That is doing something to confirm that you believe that God is faithful. Playing your role because of your confidence in the fact that God will play his role. Abraham, get out of your father's house to the land I will show you. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. And in verse 4, Abraham departed. That is, go somewhere. I will show you results there. Even though God has not shown Abraham the results, I believe you will, so I move. The work is, every time you are looking at scripture, you are identifying your part in the game. Identify the role to play. Are you trusting God for divine health? And to live in health, you are identifying your role in the world. You are identifying that a Mary had dwelt good like medicine. So you cannot be in depression and, and, and expect God to keep you in health. You shall serve the Lord your God. He will bless your bread and your water. He takes away sickness from the midst of you. So you are fulfilling your role in serving the Lord your God. And you trust him to take sickness from the midst of you. Masha koko bagadagalayatas. You are dealing away with bitterness and everything that would cause affliction. You are identifying your role in the world so that God can play his part in your life. You are trusting God for supernatural supplies. Who, he that sweat sparingly shall reap sparingly. He that sweat bountifully shall reap bountifully. Everyone according as he purpose set in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly of necessity for God loveth a cheerful giver. You, pl you play your role in the covenant and you expect supernatural supplies. That's how it is. Any area you are looking for marital harmony and dignity, you hate your wife and you want to have peace at home, you don't submit to your husband and you expect peace at home. Husbands love your wife. Wife, submit yourself to your own husbands in the Lord. Ay, 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 ay. And then you see harmony without effort. That is the center of the work. The center of the work. All of these centers around number four, all of them. Everyone is important, but this one critical. Identify your role. What you need to do. To make God do what he's meant to do. I told you already. In Mark chapter 16 verse 20. Where they moved and God moved. Ephesians. Sorry. Exodus chapter 14 verse 21. Where Moses stretched his rod. And God caused a strong east wind. To come. That is work. Number four. As cheap as salvation is. Somebody will still come. And confess. And ask for forgiveness. And receive Jesus in his life. Before he can experience salvation. Many years ago, when I rededicated my life to Christ in the year of 1986, 34 years ago, I prayed to one of my friends who was a very rascally boy. Party, disco, wine, women. And he said, what you are telling me is very hard. But let me go and try it. Let me go and try and live like a Christian. And then I'll come back, then you'll pray for me. <laughs> then he went and came back. And he said, oh boss, the thing is not easy. It's not easy at all. I said, no, it can never be easy. Because you cannot do it in your own power. It is to them that receive him that he gave power to become the sons of God. The power to say no to sin. The power to live as a Christian. So you must come to the point in your life. We are first and foremost say, Lord, I receive you into my life. Then you can receive the power to live for him. Do you see? So, you have a role to play. And God has the role to play. You are identifying your role continuously. 
playing that role to the best of your knowledge. And then, God will move. That's the work of faith, number four. Number five is the work, effort, or labor of keeping faith alive. All the things we have said from number one to number four now. The, the, the work, the effort, the labor of keeping your faith alive. The work, the effort, the labor of continuing to do the right thing. There is the tendency to grow weary. Especially when results are slow in coming. There is a tendency. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 said, and let us not be weary in well doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Let's not be weary. So there is a tendency where suddenly I've been studying the Bible. I haven't seen much. The Bible just remained there first. Where suddenly all this is sure of. I should confess positively and declare the correct thing. I'm tired. Where well, I've been giving offering and offering, I've seen nothing. I've been doing this and doing this and evangelizing. He says, You shall serve the Lord, you shall bless your brother. I've been serving the Lord, I've not seen any blessing. The devil will make you to see all that. I won't talk like that. You see, and there are situations of life that will come to confront your conviction. To confront what you believe. Things that will threaten you to abandon the right thing you are doing. In Acts chapter 4 verse 17. They call the apostles together and the Bible says, it says, let us threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. So there are situations that want to threaten and silence you. Negative situation, contradictory situations that wants to silence you and retard your effort. No. What do you do? You return back to recharge your faith. You recharge your faith with word. You recharge your faith with light. Messages such as this you are hearing and any other such message in that line, you use them to recharge your faith. And in so doing, you are keeping your faith alive. That is very, very important. For a long time, I was a very, very aggressive giver. I gave tithes, I gave offering. I've been giving tithes since the same year I gave my, dedicated my life to Christ 34 years ago. I wasn't planning to be a pastor. I wasn't planning to be a preacher. I was on my way to being a medical doctor. And I enjoyed the study and I enjoyed everything about it. Right. And, but I was very faithful in all those things. But I wasn't seeing enough result or the results others claimed they were seeing. It wasn't as automatic or as instant as it appeared to be with some others. But I pressed on tenaciously. I kept on doing what I knew to do. And when I stepped into resolve. Bam! It continued. Uh, incidentally, some of those who claim to be seeing some results at that time, some of those results are, are not near some of the things we are seeing. Consistency is a major tool in the journey of faith. And you need to keep your faith, that effort of keeping that faith alive, of recharging your faith, charging and recharging and refuse her to be weary. Refuse her to be tired. And I'm talking to someone watching right now. You've been serving God all these years. All your friends are married. And you are not. That devil is a bastard. One young lady asked me a question some time ago. She said when she was growing up in the, in the secondary school. Many, most of them kept themselves. They have virgins and those kind of things. And realized that as they graduated. Those who didn't keep themselves. Who lived rough life and live with men, and live with this, and live with that. Some of them have gotten married, some of them have children, and those who kept themselves pure and clean and neat, some of them not married yet, 
and so on and so forth. So as if the devil is trying to, to make it look like it does not pay to serve God. It was better to do the wrong thing. And I told her, that devil is a bastard liar. I said, look at me. Look at my wife. We proved the devil wrong in that regard. We lived for God. We decided to donate our youth to God. I was telling my wife today, I said, I remember going to the street at the age of nine, preaching the gospel. Before I rededicated myself back in, 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 in 1986. I remember following some more mature people into interior villages for rural crusades. Age nine, thereabout. I remember such times. The dance of witchcraft. And we saw, we had others who were living their life at that time. There is not one then who lived for the devil that can compare with whatever help we have seen of God today. So the devil is a liar. For every negative testimony he shows you, there are a thousand positive ones. Hallelujah. So he will try to use that to discourage your faith. But you need that work, that effort, that labor of keeping your faith alive. And, I, and that particular young lady who said that thing that time, who said she kept herself and so on and so forth, God visited her, visited her to confirm that she did not waste her life. The, the work, the effort, the labor of keeping faith alive. Number six, is the work, the effort, the labor of praising and appreciating God before results arrive. It is a faith action. It is a faith work to praise God, to appreciate him in anticipation of your expectation. In Psalm 106 verse 12, the Bible said they believed his word and sang his praise. Then believed they his word and sang his praise. Praise is proof of faith. Praise is proof of belief. Your celebration is, a, is in direct proportionality to your conviction. Romans chapter 4 verse 20. Concerning Abraham, the Bible said he was strong in faith. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. He was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Strong in faith, giving glory to God. Hallelujah. Strong in faith. Strong in faith. Strong in faith. Strong in faith, giving glory to God. Before Jesus ever woke Lazarus, he gave thanks first. That is a work of faith. John chapter 11, verse 41. Father, I thank you because you hear me always. Father, I thank you because you have heard me. And then he went on in verse 42. And I know that you hear me always. You see, the dead was still very, very dead. He has started thanking the father. He, the, the mystery of five loaves and two fishes, he lifted up ten, ten. In John chapter 6, verse 11 and 12, he lifted up the bread. Even before any miracle, he gave thanks first. It is a faith action. You remember the leper in, in, in Matthew chapter 8 verse 1 and 2. The Bible said, when he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper. There came a leper and worshipped him. You see? The man gave worship ahead of request. He gave worship ahead of any miracle. It is a walk of faith. You remember the Greek Syrophoenician woman in Matthew chapter 15 that told, I think it's verse 31 there about, where they said it's not good to give the children's meat to dog. Before that place, the disciples said he, she cannot see Jesus. And then he came to Jesus worshipping. Maybe we should read it. 
Do you have the scripture on on the on the screen and let us see? Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. Matthew 15, 21. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not the word. She came. He answered her not the word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped. The first time she came, she was only making requests with mouth. Jesus said, I am not sent except to the Lordship of Israel. Disciples said, send him away. And so on and so forth. This, and Jesus then was in the case. I can't carry children's food and give it to dogs. Then she bowed in worship. And even dogs, Lord help me, even dogs eat the crumbs. Wow. Then the miracle took place. Back up to verse, verse, verse 25. The, no, verse 23. But he answered her not a word. Disciples say, send her away. She is crying after us. Then Jesus then now spoke and said, I am not sent except to the lordship of Israel. I am not dealing with Greeks now. And then the woman came in worship. And that changed the narrative. It changed the narrative. It changed the narrative. It is part of your work. It is part of... Now, you have finished praying for husband. You have finished praying for work. You have finished praying for house. You have finished praying for a greater level of anointing. You have finished praying all this prayer. And you are believing God. What next do you do? Appreciate him. When you remember it, even if you have to pray again, appreciate him more profusely. Father, I thank you because your word promised it and I am believing you. Thank you because the husband is on the way. It is a walk of faith. That was number six. And number seven, it is the work, effort, or labor of giving time for every result experienced. The work, the effort, the labor of giving thanks for every result experienced. You may not know why this is so. Because for every result you have seen from God, there is more from where that result came. There is more to every miracle than what you have seen. There is more. It is the thanksgiving for, for the last that provokes the next. Don't forget this. There is more to everything God has done for you than what you saw. God has more in mind. Your faith can produce more results than what you have seen so far. But your profuse appreciation, your thanksgiving shifts you to that next that is yet to happen. In Luke chapter 17, verse 12, all the way to verse 19. Luke 17, 12. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourself unto the priest. That's go give thanks. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Cleansing means that the leprosy spots disappear. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. One out of ten. And with a loud voice glorified God. And fell down on his face at his feet. Giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering, said, We are not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? They are not found and returned to give glory except this stranger. In that case, he said to him, Arise, go your way. 
Your faith has made the whole. Go your way. Your faith has made the whole. We stop there. Go your way. Your faith. Do you know what the meaning of that was? Ten of them were cleansed. Leprosy spots disappeared from their body. The sores dried up. The hypers, what do you call it now? The parasthesia. The numbness and everything they had. Because if a leper steps on fire, he's not aware. He doesn't have any feeling. The feeling returned. And they, are, they, are, they can now feel. But there, is, there was one challenge. If the, if, the lep, if the leper man had his paralysis and his fingers like this, even though there was no more leprosy, but he, he was going back home like that. The other one said, I have seen miracle. All my sores have disappeared. Uh -uh. My body can feel something now. Let me return and say thank you. And he came. Sir, I want to thank you. I want to let you know that you said we should go and show ourselves to the priest. We have not even reached the priest before this thing disappeared. Thank you, sir. And he said to him, where are there are ten people? Where are nine? He says, I don't know where they are. Uh -uh. Out of ten, maybe one from the tribe of Judah, one from the tribe of Benjamin, one from the tribe of Levi, one from the tribe of Joseph, of Ephraim, one from the tribe of God, Dan, Naphtali, Issachar. None of them returned to give thanks except you who are a stranger from Samaria. In that case, your faith has made you whole. Fingers grew out. Fingers grew out. Eyebrow that disappeared returned. Blindness that happened be by literal prosy eye opened. The phalanges and the and the and the feet and the and the and the toenails returned. Others were cleansed. He was whole. Why? Because every miracle you see is just a stepping stone. Every miracle you see is a precursor of another miracle. Whatever God has done for you is just a test to show how you will handle it before he ushers you to the next level. Where you are now is the rehearsal for where you are meant to go. What God has done is, is a rehearsal for what he wants to do. It is your thanksgiving, your appreciation that will shift you to the next level. Those so many people don't know. There are those who stop coming to church because they got a billion naira contract. Some people stop just 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 enters their head because he has a fresh anointing now. So a uh, new uh, a mantle. So he doesn't care for nobody, not knowing that that is just rehearsal. God gave Abraham Isaac. And God said to Abraham, I need Isaac. And Abraham said, let's go. Isaac was a test. There was more God was going to give Abraham than Isaac. More. More. Beloved, don't play with your testimonies. Don't play with thanksgiving. Don't play with appreciation for what God has done. What is the work of faith. It is the work of arrival at light. Insight and revelation. It is the work of existing without fear. Dealing with doubt and unbelief and anxiety and negative emotions. It is the work of continuous positive, authoritative declaration, not speaking according to what is happening or according to what everyone wants you to speak about. It is the work of practical action. Doing what you know to do for God to do his own. It is the work of keeping faith alive. Not sinking into discouragement. Continuing to do the right thing. Not weary in well doing. It is the work of praising God for what you are asking him for while you are waiting 
of appreciating before the results. It is the work of giving thanks for every result experienced. Because when you do so, you take the miracle unto perfection. You take your testimonies unto perfection. You move God to do the next as you appreciate him for the last. Because miracles happen in chains. Testimonies come in chains. You are at one level of the chain. Now the next one is coming by thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Somebody is blessed. Somebody is blessed. Put this message to work. Listen again and again. Think about it again. Work it out. And the Lord bless you. In Jesus name. Maybe I should stop preaching for the next three four days. So that you can take time. Because the, the, the food is getting too much. It's getting too much. There will be a heavy download by uh, uh, Sunday. And then maybe Saturday night. Also the home church. Uh, if you, please send me text message if it's getting too much. Um, send us email. If you say, Pastor, please calm down a bit and let us uh, digest what we have been receiving. But I know that the not lockdown now, but as Dr. Mr. Nencher said yesterday, the open up season um, will usher you into divine openings and manifold testimonies in Jesus' precious name. Will you stand up on your feet and lift your voice and let's appreciate God? lift up your hands lift up your voice and let's appreciate him father we give you the praise father we give you the honor we give you the praise we give you the honor we give you the adoration we give you the worship 